other dandy highwayman who you're too scared to mention? You spend your cash on, what, licking flash? And grabbing your attention, yes. But wait a minute. Who are you? And what are you doing here? I am Lady Catherine Ferrers, and I've been booked by the Harrogate International Festivals today, which begs the question, who, sir, are you? I'm Dick Turpin, and I'm the highwayman who's been booked for today. Really? Yeah. Fight for it. You're on, missus. Let's go. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, no, you're right. All right. Um, what do you suggest? Uh, Paper, scissors, stone. All right, best of three. Right, then, right. you ready? Yeah, ready. One, One two, two, three. Three. Oh, oh son of a gun. All right. Best of three, though. Are you ready? All right, all right, ready? Okay. One, One two, two, three. Three. <laughs> Uh, I think I win. Nice. Oh, I think I win. All right, last one. Ready? Yep. One, two, two three. three. Just oh, get to get no. Oh, I think I won. <laughs> right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Catherine Ferris, also known as the Wicked Lady. <laughs> yes, well. Anyway, I was a wicked lady. Oh, shut up, it's too late. Being both beautiful and older than you, <laughs> I get to go first. So go with me here and imagine it's the year 1652. A wagon trundles out of St Albans, carrying supplies for an inn near Wheat Hampstead. The driver rides alone, despite the risk of hold up by highwaymen, a not uncommon occurrence on dark nights over territory perfect for ambush, the remote and lonely no man's land common. The true of the stage to and from London would provide a more lucrative target for robbers, its passengers carrying money and jewellery. But humble wagons and carts also provide booty for us highwaymen, whiskey, gin, <laughs> ornaments, fancy clothing. They must have known the risks of attack. The common was disputed land belonging to the abbeys of St Albans and Westminster, hence no man's land. The highwaymen would strike at any time, armed and dangerous. The penalty they would pay of court was death, so they would show no mercy. The driver of the wagon that night was supposed to be alone, but somewhere along the way he gave a lift to two men who hid among the baggage. They may have been his friends or secretly smuggled aboard with no one's knowledge to provide a surprise in the event of a holdup. Whatever the reason, at least one was armed with a gun. And when out of the darkness, a lone horse rider galloped up to them and shot the driver, the armed passenger returned fire, mortally wounding the highwayman who rode off into the night. And that highwayman, the ladies and gentlemen, was me. I think I might need to go back to the beginning, however. Yeah, do you think? That was a lot of stuff. Do you think? Bit much. Uh, yeah, bit much. Sorry, sorry, I'll... I'll go yeah. back, do you know what I mean? Right. 1642, far enough back, the English Civil Wars, 12 years old. <laughs> I know, it was only three years ago. Never, never mind. And my father died before I was born, and through some madness, my mother agreed to marry me to a 16-year-old gentleman called Thomas Fanshawe. His family weren't even allowed in England due to their royalist tendencies. Thomas left almost as soon as we were married, and he took all my money with him. Ah, oh, poor little rich girl. You're testing my patience, Mr. Turpin. Sorry. Anyway, my mother died very shortly afterwards, and I was left with a house and a few servants, but really not a lot else. A few servants? Oh, poor you! Oh, funnily enough, I became a bit of a recluse. <laughs> imagine that, locking yourself in your house, not seeing anyone. I mean, can you imagine? Anyway, I did meet someone, and he changed my life. It's called Ralph Chaplin. Some said he was a farmer, but I knew better. He was a highwayman, and I joined him on his quests for adventure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of Ralphie Chaplin, yeah. 
He was captured and hanged on Finchley Common. So uh, you and he were close. Huh? Well, th thanks for reminding me. The lady <laughs> never speaks of such things, so shut up and let me finish. <laughs> oh. Ralph and I worked together for a little while, as my companion has so gallantly mentioned. Ralph was captured and killed. Didn't stop me, though. I carried on. The life was exciting, and compared to staying at home in poverty, well, what's a girl to do? It all went well until that fateful night in 1652. Right. Are you finished? Yes. Because I'm sure that the ladies and gentlemen would now like to hear a real highwayman story from a real highwayman. Right. Here we are. Ladies, gentlemen, I am Dick Turpin. Butcher boy turned housebreaker, turned highwayman, turned dead man after I was hanged at Nosefire in 1739. My story begins as a poor butcher boy in that London. It was a nasty job, a messy job. You brought the cows and the sheep in through the back of the shop, killed them in the middle of all the guts and blood, then displayed the best meat at the front of the shop. Oh, our shop smelled wonderful. The smell hit you like a fist made of offal when you walked down our street, that I can tell you. Now, I was only an apprentice, wasn't paid much money, but I had a very nice little racket going. I used to steal sheep and cows, and also, and keep this quiet, the king's deer. You see, all the deer in those days belonged to the king. So that was a particularly illegal activity. Now, it was a nice little loan, it's true. But I was always hungry for cash, and so I joined a gang. Oh, that was a classy, bespoke little operation. Me and our gang used to go to people's houses, isolated farmsteads in the countryside. We kicked the front door in and then threatened the occupants until they revealed the location of their cash. I remember there was one little old lady, oh, a sweet little thing she was, reminding me of my own dear mother. It was rumoured that she had 700 pounds hidden in her farmhouse. <laughs> so I very kindly, after she wouldn't tell us where it was, very kindly roasted her over our own fire. Yeah, once she got cooking, she squealed. And when I say squealed, I really mean squealed. I'm unmuting for that. You're really not a very nice man, are you, Mr. Turpin? No, no I'm not. I don't know where the romantic notion that I was a gentleman thief comes from. It was probably the Victorians who made it up. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, was, I was nasty. And besides, you can't go around telling people that you were a kind of nice highway person. I hear that you didn't even do the stand and deliver bit. You just used to shoot people dead on the side of the road. Not very classy, is it, lady? Well, that's practical. Maybe. Anyway, the trouble with working in a gang is you have to divide the money between everyone. And when all the gang got caught, I decided to go solo and that is when i became a highwayman a gentleman of the road and that's when i started making some serious money as well and also when i made a friend for the first time in my life his name was tom king and he was one of england's other most famous highwaymen and me and tom we galloped through epping forest robbing people stealing horses rich Poor, it didn't make a difference to us. We were very, very equal from that point of view. It's true, yes. Unfortunately, one day, Tom King got caught. So naturally, I hurried to his rescue. Woo, very noble. Who's yeah. giving himself a now, eh? Quiet, you. I rode on my mighty steed to assist my partner, Tom, who was being manhandled by two thief takers. I drew my pistol, fired, and shot my mate through the heart. What? Shot him. Yeah, yeah, right through the heart. At this point, historians disagree as to whether I was either A, a very bad shot and shot my own mate through the heart, or a very good shot. Well, you see, Tom King 
had a lot of sensitive information that I would rather not have got out. And so perhaps it was better for me that he died. In fact, on his deathbed, Tom King accused me, Dick Turpin, of being a scoundrel and a coward. Mm -hmm. So I went on the wrong, and you're probably thinking, this is when Dick Turpin's famous midnight ride from London mm -hmm. to York. 250 miles in one night. It's one of the most incredible feats of sportsmanship in history. Did it happen? No. It's physically impossible. People have done scientific tests on horses. It is true that I did go on the run to York after I got caught poaching and also the trifling matter of shooting a gamekeeper while I was poaching. <laughs> So I ended up in the North Country, where I changed my name to John Palmer. Yes, it was all going very well, poaching in Leicestershire and Lincolnshire and Yorkshire, until one day I made a dreadful mistake and shot a chicken. Yeah, blasted it with a pistol for a laugh, mostly. <laughs> yeah, well, you can stop laughing. The gentleman whose chicken it was certainly didn't find it very funny. He got very angry indeed. So I threatened to shoot him as well. And so he reported me to the authorities and I was arrested. And so, yes, the great Dick Turpin, England's grace, this highwayman was brought to justice by shooting a chicken. You idiot. Yeah, yeah, I can't really argue with that. But listen, I'm not finished yet. I was locked up in York jail. Now, in those days, felons were expected to defend themselves. And so I wrote a letter to my brother-in-law back down in Essex for a character reference. But my brother-in-law would not pay the six pence, six, for the postage. And so my letter sat in Saffron Warden Post Office unopened until my old school teacher came across the letter, recognised my handwriting, and wrote to the court in York telling me, or telling them rather, that I was not John Palmer, I was the notorious highwayman Dick Turpin. They even brought him up from Essex to identify me in court. It was very, very embarrassing. Mm. I mean, I never meant to harm anyone, you know. <laughs> Apart from the people I harmed, obviously, obviously, but I, I was just trying to make my way in the world. I, I like this one here, uh, the rich lady. I didn't come from money. I had to work my way up from the dirt. Well, you weren't very good, were you? No, I didn't know. No. Go on. There's more, if you I can know. bear it. Not really, but carry on. They hanged me. It's true, Kath, they did. They hanged me on the 19th of April, 1739, at Knavesmire in York. And actually, actually, Miss Ferris, this is the only part of the story where I really gain any credit, actually, because I was driven through the streets of York on a horse and cart, open-topped, where I bowed to the ladies, waved to the people, and was generally rather charming. We then arrived at the scaffold, and I climbed the ladder myself. And after about half an hour, having some top banter with the executioner and the guards, I eventually got very bored and threw myself off the ladder to hang myself. So there you are. Quite a noble end for me. But that's Well, that's not great. I'm pretty pleased to hear the end of your story. So no, 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 no. That's the end of the noble bit. It's not actually oh, the end. On. There's more. Would you like to hear it? Not really, but go on. Good, good. I was held one night in the Blue Boar Inn in York. In those days, pubs had rooms where you could put dead bodies. That's why they called them the good old days. I was then buried three <laughs> times. First in St. George's Cemetery, and then huh? a doctor dug me up and put me in his back garden for it. Possibly he wanted to do medical experiments to see how great I was. And then my friends jumped over the wall and rescued me from the doctor's garden and then buried me again in St. George's. And there my grave is to this very day. And it literally has tens of thousands of visitors every single year, making me incredibly famous. Well, you might be famous, but I've actually got a pub named after me on No Man's Land Commons. So there, 
Oh, while you uh, might be uh, more famous, Mr. Turpin, I am more wicked. Let's see where they bury you this time. Don't you meeting. press that button. Right. Meeting, we've had enough of you. Go, get out. Go. Right, Ferris. You Go and on. me, I'm coming up to Harrogate now. So you better right. get ready right. because Absolutely. we're in mass coming. Turpin's see bringing in the thunder. Let's dance. Ferris. You come. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so very sorry about him. Well, as I say, I am certainly the more wicked of the two highwaymen. I am so sorry about Mr. Turpin there, but thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. I thank you. Thanks for joining us. If you have enjoyed this event as part of the Harrogate International Festivals, please do think about a donation to ensure that our festivals can survive in the future. Donations can be made by texting HIF and the amount to 70085. For more events, please visit our online hub, the HIF Player. It's packed with upcoming live streams, events you've missed, archive recordings and much more.